Musk's recap models for the ACCA strategic business leader for the March 2024 Athletic Transcentral Football Club. Now, the vital things that you can always refer to in your answer, I'll summarise it for you. What really happens in the pre scene firstly, you can always say that we have got a storied history of success over 60 years in the top division. So uh, you can always say that because in terms of acquiring potential top players, yes, quote them in your answer. However, we are facing challenges, okay, maintaining this level of success in recent years. So this means that when you are discussing about the change management, always quote that in, into your answer. The second thing that you can always think about is the ownership. Because now it's under the leadership of the family, right? So if that's the case, then why not introducing institutional investors? Now, yesterday, I've posted my thoughts regarding this area. Because if you can see in the FFPR or Financial Fair Play regulations, the calculation of the re relevant earnings, we need to deduct the, the dividend paid. Now, in terms of uh, the traditional accounting profit, yes, we do not need to deduct the dividend paid in the traditional profit after tax. But here, if we were to introduce institutional investors in, so that may be in bridging, potentially, given the falling margins in our company, that the FFPR may be breached. So please do watch out. Don't forget, we only got one committee, so there might be possibilities of introducing additional committees in. Now, we can always quote that we've made significant investment, including the state-of-the-art training facilities upgraded many years ago, and therefore, yes, we've got experience of doing such things in the near future. Don't forget, the TV revenue accounts for the most, margins are falling. My perspective is the primary risk that we are facing would be the potential breach of the FFPR. And finally, in terms of the CSR, we can always quote, yes, we need to do this because we've got certain values, transparency, conduct of a player, safeguarding their welfare and stakeholder engagement, and involving with community and uh, being in my mentally friendly. And always quote our mission, okay, if I were to do something new, especially that if I were to uh, expand my business globally, yes, go ahead, why? It's suitable, why? Because, yes, our mission will be to maintain the leading position in the market. Right, so uh, what I would do is that these five top summaries, it's, you can always refer to in your answer to make sure that, yes, your answer quality looks better. Now, the next chapter onwards, I would like to quote a bit of business models from your uh, earlier studies in your SBL. The reason why this will be a case is because, yes, I said to my SBL student in the past, using your business common sense will be very key. However, in certain questions, if you're simply dumping your business common sense, you will find out that there might not be enough points to get the full marks of the requirement. So for certain answers, you do need framework from the SBL study. Now, referring to the strategy, I would say that growth strategies, by commenting on the pros and cons of organic growth, which means doing the business on your own, buying other businesses, which means mergers and acquisitions, if I were you, I would like to consider the company portfolio, where not we should buy uh, and other business. So for example, we can buy the marketing business, okay? We can even buy uh, the bank. Yes, we set up the bank uh, to uh, manage our finance properly. In whatever scenarios that on the exam day that the examiner given to us, if I were you, I would always think about whether or not we will be better off, whether or not it's attractive to us, whether or not we can get subsequent benefit, for example, support from government, whether or not the entry costs will be quite high, whether or not how we deal with the acquiree 
So for example, whether or not we use all of our resources to help them out, which means um, being a parental developer, alternatively benefiting from its synergy. For example, the increased sales revenue. Alternatively, we just use the hands-off approach and make sure that we always keep an eye to the uh, return because our aim is to list the company, for example, in a few years later. And this is why we need to build our portfolio and to build multiple revenue streams. So say to the examiner about that, okay, if you're performing the M&A. Now, finally, of course, you need to know about the pros and cons of the strategic alliances, including joint ventures and so on. The next area within strategy, yes, the SFA test, very important. Because an exam question may be saying that, right, I would like to proceed with the investment, but whatever it may be, for example, investing in a new stadium and something like that, you will need to comment on that. So if I were you, I would like to split my answer into three headings. Suitability, so for example, referring back to the values, mission and the experience that we've been doing, whether or not it's suitable uh, to our business, current position and so on, performing the SWOT analysis, whether or not feasible, which means whether or not we've got money and resources in doing that work, whether or not it's acceptable by balancing the risks and rewards. Okay, so uh, make sure that you can think about that. Chapter 2 then. When revising governance in the SBO, yes, I would say that in most circumstances, it's just to be the textbook chapter. Now, my view on this chapter would be you will need to hmm, memorize all these bits and pieces. Otherwise, you are not giving enough points to uh, score you a pass in this paper. Now. When we are talking about the stakeholder analysis, always use the Mendeleev's mapping matrix. Because if you are using the Mendeleev's mapping matrix, you are telling the examining team how we're going to deal with the stakeholders in turn. If you are not using this, you may be only coming up with the solution without explaining why we're going to be doing this in terms of analysing the power, whether or not it's high or low, and interests. You will need to explain why the power and interest will be high or low before you come up with your solution. At the same time, when you're commenting on the corporate social responsibility issues, for example, yes, in the actual exam, that yes, because we are working with the suppliers supplying us with the merchandise, so perhaps we will need to audit that supplier and suggesting that we need to develop a code of ethics and how CSR is uh, important to us. So if I were you, I would like to discuss the CSR from the profit, people and planet point of view of how it will help the business and the importance of maintaining ethics and sticking to the rules or laws, if you like. Now, the examining team may be asking you about the chairman's role. Yes, I've got my own mnemonic on the screen. It's called BEANS. It's my own mnemonic. Okay, so you can see that on your own. How about the roles of the non-executive directors? Because, yes, in the current case, there are not enough net or non-executive directors in this company. So uh, the examining team may be saying that, well, the numbers are not right. Why not to introduce additional non-executive directors? Please do explain the roles of them. So make sure that you're ready. I use my own mnemonic, PRSS. Okay, now, the examining team may also ask you, perhaps setting up the nomination committee and asking you about the roles of them. If I were you, I'd like to use my own mnemonic, but do not write in the exam, but just to help you a bit to memorize all these bits and pieces. SBSBS. Okay. Now, um, how about the remuneration committee to be set up? My mnemonic, DISCO. Okay, so you can, uh, yes, uh, take a photo of that and you can uh, read them on your phone. Now, um, another risk would be the in breach of the uh, FFPR. So a potential exam question, if I'm the examiner, I'm not the examiner anyway, but uh, if I'm the examiner for the SBO, I will certainly set a question about setting up the internal audit function, or we can call it as the risk manager. 
Now, uh, if that's the case, then what sort of roles in terms of risk management by those functions? Yes, I use my own mnemonic. It's called FIRST, okay? Dealing with the framework for risk management, uh, making sure insurance policies is correct, reporting such issues, strict compliance with certain uh, risk management framework and training of our staff in the business. Now, the next chapter, yes, I've done a separate recording about the internal control. I use my own mnemonic, CCRIM, yes. Uh, so in my previous recording, we've talked about the company may be in breach of the FFPR. And this is why perhaps an exam question may say that why not to review our internal control system so such issues will not be taking place in the future. So if I were you, I would like to take a holistic perspective in answering such questions. Chapter four, the exam question may be setting a question scenario that we need to turn around strategy. We think that change is so big, is so large, is so transformational. So what we need is a turnaround strategy to stop the company from suffering losses and change the management and so on. I will use my own mnemonic. It's called SMSMERP in my answer to generate into ideas. Chapter five, perhaps the process needs to change because we are told currently that Thursday, uh, each of the department in our company can recruit members. Okay, so that would be a big issue. Secondly, it's the IT director and the marketing director will be the same person. Right there. So there might be a second issue that the, um, he's not very good at dealing with both things. At the same time, the information is not updated from a finance department's point of view. So such processes need to change. Alternatively, yes, we may be introducing the new digital platform. So we may be outsourcing it. If you think about the word outsourcing, yes, I will always tell the examining team about the importance of that. Importance can be high or low. If it depends on whether or not we need to do it on our own, if the answer is yes, it's high importance. Whether or not it's complicated, which means, okay, whether or not it involves human judgment. If the answer for that is yes, it's high complexity. Of course, if it is low complexity, yes, we can develop the particular software. Either will be the automated software, which means the off-the-shelf software, or the tailored solution and to deal with that situation. So using the Harman's process strategy matrix, uh, so this may help. Another chapter, is talking about project management. I want you to think about this from a holistic perspective. For example, when you're managing the project, how you define the project, how much value is the estimate that you can get from the project, and how you will be involving different staff and stakeholders within that project. And then you need to design it with a particular plan and the project initiation document. And then you simply deliver it, which means conducting the change management. And finally, you will need to review what you have done to learn from the past mistake. Another chapter, yes, very, very important, is that the examining team may set a question using the build rich model and asking you how to enable the 80 company success. So make sure, yes, you will need to memorize all this key element, otherwise you cannot construct your answer. My mnemonic for this is called LSC worm. Okay, it's like a worm. Now, chapter eight is all about the marketing. We may be building a particular digital platform and in order that we need to expose our digital platform to generate more revenue, Yes, ideas would be the six eyes. Six eyes, okay, from your exam, from your study test, very, very important in that. The final chapter, if you're talking about the culture, 
just to refer to the component in the cultural web. That's important. Of course, when talking about the leadership, on the other hand, you need to find out the keywords. Okay, I've illustrated that in my course, and to expand your answer, so you will get very good marks in such a requirement. I'm sure that a lot of you have already gone through the pre-sim, and some of you have gone through the pre-sim materials with my course and recordings. But now. At this stage, what I want you to do is that just forget about the pricing and to position yourself as a consultant to the business. Every point that you make on the exam date, you will need to make sure that the value is high, because the examining team would like to see in your answer two words: "So what." You say about this, so what? You say about that, so what? So always think one step further. What would be the implication to the business? What would be the risk to the business? What would be my valuable advice I can offer to the board? Always think about them, and you will achieve exam success in the upcoming March 2024 SBL exam. Success. Right there, I'm gonna be stopping my recording now, and best of luck with your exam success. A P C, accounting for your future.